Good morning, QCAC. Happy Easter to you. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. I am glad to connect together with you on this Easter Sunday, and even though we cannot meet together physically, we can meet together through technology. And the church can still be the church, and we can join together together our hearts and minds as we share life together and I just pray that God will just touch you today on this very special Easter Sunday morning. Harry Houdini was one of the most famous uh, magicians of all time. He was known for his grand illusions. He was known for his daring spectacular escape acts. For example, local police would uh, strip search him and place him in shackles and lock him in jails, but he would escape. From handcuffs and straitjackets, he escaped. From locked, water-filled tanks, he escaped. From nailed packing crates, he escaped. But then in October 1926, death laid its hands upon Harry Houdini and put him in the grave. And he did not escape. He had told his wife, if there is any way out, I will find it. If there is any way out, I will contact you and will do it on the anniversary of my death. So for 10 years, his wife kept this light burning over his portrait and at the end of 10 years, she put the light out. Death had Harry and he could not escape. Death laid its hands also on the Lord Jesus Christ. Death put Jesus in a rock-hewn tomb. A giant stone was rolled over its entrance. The seal of the Roman government was placed upon it. But on the third day, Jesus Christ himself stirred himself. He rose from death. The grave clothes that, that had been wrapped around him, he left behind like a butterfly escaping from a cocoon. He passed through the walls of that rock-hewn tomb. An angel rolled away the stone, not to let Jesus out, but rather to let the disciples see that Jesus had risen from the dead. Jesus Christ is alive. But the question comes up, what if, but what if, what if death still held Jesus, like it did for Harry Houdini? What if there were no Easter? And that's actually the, the question that Paul begins to answer for us in 1 Corinthians 15, 14 to 20. I've been particularly helped by Adrian Rogers to help me to understand this passage, and I'm adapting his outline for today. Essentially, Paul begins to ask this unthinkable question. He begins to think the unthinkable, and he begins to push it to its logical conclusion. What if Jesus is still dead? What, what if he is still buried in the grave? And he begins to give us six tragic answers. Number one, if there were no Easter, if Christ has not been raised, then preaching is pointless. 1 Corinthians 15, 14, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. Friends, if Christ has not been raised, then you and I, right now, we're wasting our time together. I'm wasting my time by preaching, and you're wasting your time by listening to me. We should all be doing something else. We all should be doing something much more productive. But Paul had already told them earlier in this chapter about the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel of Jesus that had been preached to them. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried. That he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to many. You see, you can't really preach the gospel without preaching the resurrection of Christ. Without, without the resurrection, preaching is pointless. We, we should just shutter the church permanently and get on with our lives. 
If there were no Easter, if Christ had not been raised secondly, then faith is foolish. Verse 14 again, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. You know, I learned that trust is really the foundation for every business, every company, every organization, every leader. I really learned this through one of the men in our last church, David Horsager, who has actually now made a whole career out of, of uh, presenting the dynamics of trust to corporations and organizations all over the United States. Trust is earned. And, and if a company makes foolish decisions and trust is lost, they could lose everything. It follows that if you trust a company that does not deserve your trust, then you could lose everything. You see, if we're trusting somehow somebody who is dead, then our faith is foolish. Because a dead person can't do anything for us. A dead savior has no power to save us. But our faith is not foolish. God can be trusted because he raised Jesus from the dead. Romans 10, 9 says, But if you, declare with, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, you trust that Christ died for your sins, and you declare him as Lord, and you also trust God who raised him from the dead. That is actually core to your faith. Your faith rests upon these eternal truths. Raising Jesus from the dead was God's stamp of approval that, that everything that Jesus said and did and lived and taught, it was approved by God. Raising from the dead proves and shows us that he has the power to save us. A teacher gave the, a class a writing assignment write an essay on the world's greatest living person. So some of the students wrote about the president. Some wrote about people in the entertainment world. Some people wrote about, uh, some of the students wrote about people uh, in, in sports, others, scientists, philosophers, leaders. But one student wrote about Jesus Christ. When the teacher received this paper, she said, you know, that was a good paper but I really think you misunderstood the assignment because the instruction was to write about the world's greatest living person. And the student said, but teacher, he is alive. Our faith is not foolish. If there were no Easter, if Christ has not been raised, then thirdly, then the disciples were deceivers. Verse 15, 1 Corinthians 15. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. False witness. Somebody who goes into the courtroom, who willingly, knowingly, deliberately perjures themselves, becomes a liar. They know better, but they went out and they told an untruth. And Paul is saying here, we testify that Jesus Christ is alive. We saw him. Many disciples talked with him, ate with him, fellowshiped with him, touched him, handled him, all after his resurrection. Now you might ask, well, well, how do you know that they didn't just make all this up? How do you know that they, they didn't just come up with this nice, good story in order to save face? Very simple. Deceivers and martyrs they are not made of the same stuff. You see, people might tell a lie to gain something, but very few people will die for a lie. People might tell a lie to get out of trouble, but they certainly wouldn't tell a lie to get into trouble. <laughs> Plus, gain would, what gain would the disciples have had to, to declare oh, Jesus is alive? But they consistently and boldly said, he is alive. We know he is alive. And for declaring this, they died as martyrs. Many tortured, persecuted, burned at the stake, thrown to the lion, stoned, crushed, humiliated. They suffered, they bled, they died. And if Jesus is still in the grave, 
then all those disciples, they were liars, they were con artists, they were fakes. And everything that they did and everything they said, well, that was just a complete fraud. They must have been just deceivers of the highest degree. Yet how many people have gone out of their way to prove, to disprove, the resurrection of Christ. They've gone out that, done their research. They've done, we want to disprove the resurrection of Christ. And they actually come to the opposite and, and, and overwhelming conclusion that here the resurrection of Christ is one of the most proven facts of history. No, the disciples were not deceivers. Number four, if there were no Easter and if Christ has not been raised, then sin is sovereign. 1 Corinthians 15, 17, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Here's the, here is the progression. If Jesus didn't rise from, from, from the dead, then death had power over him. Death defeated him. And if death had power over Jesus, well, must not be God. If Jesus is not God. He can't offer this complete sacrifice for our sins. And if he can't offer this complete sacrifice for our sins, then our sins are not completely paid for before God. And if my sins are not completely paid for before God, then I'm still in my sins. No resurrection, no Savior. No Savior, no forgiveness. No forgiveness, no justification. No justification, no cleansing. No cleansing, no release from the penalty of sin. No release from the penalty of sin. No promise of eternal life. You're still in your sins. Good Friday service in... Dampara Baptist Church, Chittagong, Bangladesh. Church was packed. They were gathered to watch the Jesus film. Little children sat on the floor in the aisles across the front of the church, rows of people in the back. They, were, they stood there craning their necks just to watch the Jesus film. And at one part, as it began to show Jesus being crucified, a holy hush fell upon that room. People were shocked, some wept, others gasped in unbelief. You see, they were feeling the agony of Jesus' pain. They were seeing the disillusionment of the disciples. And in that very emotional moment, a young boy suddenly cried out, Do not be afraid. He gets up again. I saw it before. <laughs> Thank God that we are no longer in our sins because we have a risen Savior. He has paid the price for our sins. We are justified. We are forgiven. Otherwise, sin is sovereign. Tim Keller says this. He says, here's the gospel. You're more sinful than you ever dared believe. You're more loved than you ever dared hope. Let me say that again. Here's the gospel. You're more sinful than you ever dared believe and you're more loved than you ever dared hope. Number five. If there were no Easter, if Christ has not been raised, then death has dominion. 1 Corinthians 15, 18. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If Christ is still in the grave, then all of your friends, all of your family who has believed in Jesus and they passed away, well, they're dead and gone. You'll never see them again. Their bodies are, are, are turning to dust. Death has won. But honestly, are we really supposed to believe that, that this universe, this planet Earth, which, 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 which with all of its beauty, with all of its balance, with all of its symmetry, with all of its ecosystems, can we just somehow believe it was just here by chance and everything just ends in the grave? I mean, can we honestly believe, okay, we're, we're born crying, we live complaining, we die disappointed. That's it? Come on. That's all we're going to hope for? That we're just going to grow weaker and sicker until we die and get buried in a box? That's basically what one of my racquetball friends told me. And then we think all these thousands of people who die, suffer and die, especially during this pandemic, those who knew Jesus, those who didn't, 
but people are dying. Is this some just sort of sick cosmic joke? And if so, then death is a monster and death has dominion and I cannot believe that. Sally Hume's mother passed away this past week. She was 100 years old and she was a believer, believer in Jesus. And with all of us who have lost loved ones who knew Jesus, we have hope. And though we grieve, we have this blessed hope that someday we are going to be united with them in heaven. We're going to be reunited with them. No, this life just doesn't end with grief and sorrow and tears. When we have said goodbye to them on this earth, for those who, the, who have known Jesus, then one day we will see them again in heaven. If there were no Easter, if Christ has not been raised, then number six, then the future is futile. futile. Verse 19, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Well, if this life is all there is, then it's just bad news, past and present. If this life is all there is, then all the good times that we experience, even for the moment, well, it's only going to get worse because you're going to get sick, you're going to face problems, you're going to eventually die. Ernest Hemingway expressed a very pessimistic very pessimistic view of life when he said, it's as though we are a colony of ants living on one end of a burning log. That describes the future without hope. People that have no hope in Jesus. I mean, what do they have to look forward to? I was reading my daily time with God this past week and I read this line from Psalm 89. Have you created everyone for nothing? Psalmist asked the question. Have you created everything for nothing? I've often thought logically. If there is no God, if there is no living Christ, follow it logically, then life is absolutely meaningless. It has no purpose you might just as well sin badly because nothing, nothing, nothing matters. If Christ has not been raised, then all time, space, matter is just a bad joke. It makes no sense. In fact, it is utter chaos. It's just, this life is just a big bad dream. And that, friends, is absolutely depressing. If Christ has not been raised, then the future is not only fearful, it's futile. A wise person once said, if Jesus Christ is still in that grave, nothing really matters. But if Jesus Christ came out of that grave, nothing but that really matters. The good news, Christ is is alive. Everything matters. Verse 20 of 1 Corinthians 15, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Because Christ indeed has been raised from the dead, preaching is profitable, faith is feasible, the disciples are dependable, sin is subdued, death is defeated, and the future is fabulous because Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. He has taken the sting out of sin. He has taken the gloom out of the grave. He has taken the dread out of death. He has given us a hope that is steadfast and sure. The good news, Christ is alive. Once upon a time, a spider saw a massive lion go into a cave. The spider was envious of this great king of the jungle. So the spider said to himself, I will imprison that lion. I will imprison that beast in this cave. And so while the lion was asleep in the 
Kay the spider began to spin a web across the mouth of that cave, back and forth, up and down. He spun and he spun and he spun until he was almost spun himself right away. Then that little spider sat down by the side of the tomb, well, as it were, by the side of the cave. And he said, now, now that mighty beast is my prisoner. No longer will he seek his prey in the dark of the night in the jungle. No longer will he bask in the golden sunlight. Now I have taken him captive. He is my slave. But the old lion woke up from his nap. He shook the dust from his mane. He stretched himself out and he let out a roar that just echoed down through the valley and over the hill. And then he walked out of that cave and he never even knew that the spider web was even there. Envy and hate wove a web of unbelief around the tomb of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But the lion of the tribe of Judah rose from the dead. And it's like he never even knew that the devil's flimsy web was there. The good news, Christ is alive. Pray together with me. Lord, on this wonderful Easter Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus Christ is alive. And our faith is encouraged. And despair drops away. And we look up with full face unto you with a greater sense of confidence to face today and tomorrow in the face of death that is all around us, in the face of crisis that is all around us, we put our confidence in you. We put our trust and faith in you. You are the God who is dependable and you will carry us through. In Jesus' name, amen. I trust, friend, that you will be sharing this good news with others because in the face of death and crisis around us, this is really an evangelistic opportunity to tell other people about Jesus, to tell them what you know, who you know. As best you can, tell them your story. Express your faith. One way that we celebrate as a congregation in expressing our faith as well is through giving. And obviously we're not passing the offering bags here today, but you can give over online, qcac.org, just go there, check the word give, give financially. You can also use our QCAC app. If you're trying to find it, do a search for Queens Christian Alliance Church, you'll eventually find it and then you can give online through that means or you can mail your checks in. Continue to worship through giving. Worship the Lord through the giving of your tithes and offerings during this season. And for our community life, let me just remind you of a couple of things that we're endeavoring to do in this season. Number one actually is the Sunday prayer time, Sunday prayer hour, six to seven, every Sunday night and uh, if you get my email then just click on that zoom link enter the password if you are not getting that email then sign up and I'll send you the link David Smith at QCAC.org and then one of the things that first happened when this coronavirus hit and we shut down every activity in the church it was like well how can I continue to make disciples and so I've done uh, we're doing three sessions on how to meet Jesus every day through the Word. We have one more, part three, 
Uh, this Wednesday will be the third and final one, April 15th, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. If you have not joined us yet, please say, you know, send me an email and I'll send you the link to this as well and give you all three handouts all at once. Basically, you get a chance to read the handout. Then we take one hour, we talk about it together. Great discussion. Also, people are connecting through small groups. And here are four opportunities that if you are not part of a small group to kind of connect with other believers, then here are Zoom links that you can use to meet with, with a women's group or married couples or Grace Upon Grace or young adults. Uh, most of the time they're meeting on Friday, young couples kind of maybe moves their date around a little. So those are the con there's the contact information for you to get connected with other believers at QCAC. And finally, let me give you a blessing. The blessing today is from 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Happy Easter. Have a blessed Easter with friend, with family. The Lord is risen indeed. God bless you all. Amen and amen.